they didn't have two years to make a fucking real modern day and have a bit more of a plan to it and actually make something for it. So the whole modern day aspect to me, if they fuck it up again, you get rid of it because you are fucking mental cases. If you can't figure it out after two years off, you stupid fucks. Like, seriously. Mm. But uh, I, I have I have good good hopes for it. For some reason, I just burst out in anger. Then, yeah, but uh... just a little bit. I get it. It's cool. I get I'm it. Ju- I'm just playing with the idea of the way of solving it and removing it. Is that you know, it gets everyone stuck in the Animus or the Helix or whatever, and then everyone's hooked in like uh, the Matrix, and no one's getting out. And then every single game from that point on will just be inside this Matrix, so there will never actually be. Uh, modern day, unless they suddenly get out, but that might be a way they will actually remove the modern day story. And I think that would be really sad, but I think that's actually a possibility they might go for. I feel like they won't. I feel like, I feel from what Gabe said, Gabe said to us, uh, th- he said, um, he said they know the direction, like they know what the fans want. So I guess having this two year break means they can now implement what the fans want. So I'd hope that that's possible. And as well, um, ah, what's the guy's name? Jeffrey Olin, who wrote Syndicate, said that the inclusion of the Desmond's son slash relative person that was teased in the uh, voice clip you get in Syndicate was it, it goes deeper than that. It's not just an Easter egg, but he, he couldn't say any more about it. And that was on his podcast with Luma, if anyone wants to check it out. Um, and I, I, I guess kind of the two things kind of work together. So if they know the direction they're going in and this Desmond Sun thing isn't just an Easter egg, then I'd say that's the yeah. direction they're going. And I think, I've said this before, it's very possible that like they might do what they did with Assassin's Creed 1 to give themselves time, is go into the future. like Because the first game was released in 2007, but set in 2012. So the game could be released 2017, set in, you know, the 2020s. And yeah. we'll play as Desmond Sun when he's older, and we'll kind of lead up to that point so they can tell the story how they want to. It's very possible. I don't know whether they'll do it, but um... and they can do some flashbacks here and there as well. Yeah, in amongst exactly. that Of like yeah, how yeah. he got. Yeah. But have you guys but watched my video be... <clears throat> on Modern Day? Which one? Uh, Did uh, I? The one I, I talked about what, uh, bringing Desmond Miles, like William Miles, back. Yes, I actually did watch that. Yes, I did. What do you think about that? Uh, I'm not interested in William Miles, honestly. I'm also not interested in any other character. Like, I don't want to act with the modern day. I don't want to play a, a modern day part of the game where I'm actually going out and doing shit. If that makes like that, that doesn't really make much sense. I'll try to elaborate. Yeah, try that. I'm yeah. happy if you just play as Desmond's son and you do similar to what Desmond did. You you're just a part of this story in amongst with other characters. But until I've done more shit, I don't need to go out and like because people are like you could end up being playing as um, <clears throat> uh, who like who's the is it Galena the girl Galena, the fucking yeah, chicken yeah. yeah Galena yeah, yeah. Yeah. people are like you could play as Desmond Sun and Soga and then so you can actually do some stuff flash out on a mission as Galena I'm like I don't want to do that yeah. I don't want to actually just for just for the sake of it be being uh, like doing modern day missions I want it to be like purpose driven. So mm. I don't. I I'd be like happy. Like maybe if you're right. If they flash forward, and you know Desmond Sun's 18 and he's been with Abstergo for years and he's like one of their agents and he goes and kills a Templar or something and then he, or no sorry he kills uh, an assassin, and then he finds out about, somehow about his assassin heritage and it goes from there. I don't know. Oh, like shit. that might be. What a if way he to do kills it? William Miles, because he's now the leader of the Brotherhood. He's like the worldwide leader now, leader now like the mentor. No, he, reti- of the he retired after Desmond. They got him back. They no, came he, back. he got back. He got back. He 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 was in a cave in Norway, actually. Totally then, knew that. Totally, no, I knew that. I was just testing you guys. Oh, he's, so he's, back. he's the mentor of the Brotherhood now. So what he's if like Desmond's son kills William Miles as a uh, Templar agent? Depends how That'd they do cool. it. Like it'd be it'd be a really cool way to start off his journey because it'd be so different from Desmond. Like if he plays like. You know, you've been with Abstergo for so long that you are kind of working for them. But if he finds out about his assassin heritage, I mean, it, it's difficult because it's kind of like with Haytham. He grew up as an assassin, then he became a Templar after Edward was killed. Like, yeah. I, like, like he, even though after Haytham grew up, 
he knew he learned about his father and was like, wait, my father was an assassin. He didn't then become an assassin. He stayed as a Templar, which I find it strange. Like if Desmond's son grows up thinking he's, you know, like a Templar, like he should kill assassins. If he suddenly finds out, oh, my family were assassins, will he suddenly go, oh, I better be one. Like, if he kill, if he actually kills his grandfather, I think he will because then, oh shit, they made me kill my grandfather. Oh shit, they actually almost, oh mm. oh shit, they have the body of my father. Oh shit, he did this to save the world. Oh shit, Templars try to stop him, and this all these thoughts are running around his head, and then maybe he meets Rebecca and Sean, and like, oh shit, you need to blah blah blah. I think that that could work out if they do it well. Well, um, to the level of which, if they that maybe like. You're right, but maybe not. He kills William straight away. That could be something later in his thing. But, you know, maybe he finds out about the assassins through being in Abstergo computer systems and, and finding the Desmond files and stuff. Mm, that's another possibility. I just don't want the first person uh, hacking thing. No, like it would... fuck that. Yeah, I don't want it back. No, of course not. It could be more like something like, you know, you probably have an Abstergo email and all of a sudden you start getting these weird emails through the game. Yeah. That you That'd notice, cool. and, they're, and they're just sending weird messages to you, and that's it. Could just be a side part to the game, like you only notice that if you want to, and then at the end of the game, you get like an email, and they're sending you pictures and files and shit. And it's the assassins; they know who he is, and they're sending him files of like Desmond to try to make him question what he's doing with Abstergo, things like that, perhaps. And um, yeah. you know, there's a lot of options. There's a, so many options with this. Like, I'd be completely fine with uh, having the first game being, like you said, in the uh, in Assassin's Creed 1, you, you're you stuck at the Abstergo. Like, I'd be completely mm. fine with that. I just want to explore it a little bit more than just walking from my room to the Animus. Sure. But yeah. uh, like, being like, stuck there would be cool. Yeah, I think I think what they need is, don't elaborate too much. We don't need these modern-day missions and stuff, because that's what we have the Animus for. We have the Animus there, so we can do all these cool, like, action sequences, all these different missions and quests and storylines yeah. and all that. The modern day is there to convey the modern day story, and having the gameplay makes you feel like you're involved, like it has a purpose, like you're with this character, you want to progress, you want to, like, you ha there's a reason for it, but when you have that disconnect with Unity, Syndicate, just cutscenes and stuff, it, there's no purpose, like, you don't care about it, there's no reason yeah. to be doing it because you're not playing it, and I think having Desmond's son as the main character kidnapped by Abstergo, you get to learn more about, like, you can then, if, if, you, if they need to, like, you can have the exposition of, like, you know, uh, Desmond, Juno, the Assassins, Templars, what's happened previously. But also, I think, have it similar to AC1, but we need more cryptic shit. Because that's what was fun in Assassin's Creed about the modern day, was all of the glyphs you could do, like, all the subtleties that were there that kind of linked and pieced different pieces of information together, and you could really speculate about it, and that's what we need back. And I think if they did a similar modern day to AC1 to start it off, possibly, with a little bit more to it and more substance, with... A ton of cryptic stuff because I love cryptic stuff in Assassin's Creed. I yeah. I agree. I agree. And I think I was gonna I'll ask you this, Nick, because I've talked to James about it a lot, but to do with what James said, with let's say and I agree, I think it could just be an Abstergo similar to AC1. You could do other things, go around uh, the, the this area because you, you're more you're not a pri you could not be a prisoner if that makes sense. You your animus yeah. is just kind of like a part of your room almost. Like that's and just daily a normal routine. Thing for it's you. your work. Yeah. Yeah, that that's it. So Perhaps when the cryptic shit can start with things like your weird, you know, if you go into emails back, like in the Desmond ga uh, games, you'd go into emails and Lucy's emails of Vidix and AC1 and you'd find weird shit, or you had your own emails in Brotherhood and things like that. So if you had uh, an email thing where you're getting weird messages that could start things off and all of a sudden you're noticing things in the Animus and plus you're a sage. Let's not forget, yeah. there could be some really mm. cool playing around with uh, having the Aida memories flash in to the modern day and things like that, and oh, you start seeing shit. visions outside the Animus. So it's, there's it's a lot the, of things that this guy could have going for him. And let's just say, I just want to say this, let's just say with him being in Abstergo, and let's say at the end of the game, like Desmond, he doesn't leave Abstergo until AC2, so there's this in-between time where he's still at Abstergo and can go on the Animus. Then you could do the whole 2018 remaster the Desmond games, but we cut out Desmond bits, it's only Ancestor bits, but you add in, the, it's a sequel to Empire in terms of modern day, but not in a big way. Like, the modern day, you're still exactly where you left off at the end of Empire, you're in your room, but you can now just access the Animus and jump into all your DNA, which includes Desmond's stuff, obviously, So because he's your father, or yeah. you're related to him. So you can then play all the Ezio games and Altair storylines remastered, to some degree, maybe they're remastered, maybe they're That'd just... That'd be a cool, cool way to do it. But, 
that way it's a cool way to do it you kind of continue the story on and hint maybe towards the next game and put some yeah. hints for the next game promoting it but also uh you can play all the old desmond games and maybe there's desmond glyphs instead of subject 16 glyphs and i don't know things like that this would cool add a shit. lot of replay uh, value definitely mm. it gives a story reason for us to revisit those games as well yeah. like with the current state of assassin's creed we have a story reason to go back and play uh all the desmond uh ancestors kind of thing i think that'd be really cool i would really enjoy i I would actually pay full price for a game like that because of the new added shit and if the um empire actually expands on the modern day and you actually begin something new and you can actually go back and relive things with him instead of desmond i think that i think that would work quite well actually i I agree that that, that would also welcome a lot of new players in because you don't have to play uh, you don't have to be desmond to uh, or play the old games because you can actually get the new story through It'd this new character. It'd be a perfect new start because it it starts a new story arc, so it'll work for new players. But also, it welcomes back the old players because it's it's a continuing story because it's continuing yeah. from the Desmond saga. However, it also is a new arc as well, so it's perfect for both. Like Ubisoft, just need to pursue this. I just. The only thing they need to be careful with, and this is why they need to actually have some modern day cutscenes in between games and as things happen. So like when you finish like Brotherhood or you finish two or you finish Revelations, they'd actually need to have some modern day cutscenes with Desmond Sun to explain certain things like at the end of AC two, remember Juno or not Juno, Minerva says Desmond's name, Ezio talks to Desmond in Revelation, so there's Desmond references in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you'd then need to have to explain that in the modern day to um, Desmond's son of why he's like, what the fuck? Who's Desmond? You know but what I doesn't, mean? Doesn't the Animus have like an automated voice that reads out all the archive? The archive uh, of the, Ooh, the, yeah, the Animus? You could, yeah, you could look up the archive of Desmond once you discover, like once Desmond's son discovers Desmond, like in Assassin's Creed 2, he's like, what the hell is this all about? Like go into that like Abstergo database, find all the information on Desmond, and that's where he starts to learn about Desmond. That'd be, that'd be yeah. cool. Well, well, it, but that would be tough because it isn't a main game. So maybe he finds out about, maybe let's say story reason at the end of Empire, he finds out about Desmond or through Empire, he finds out about Desmond, blah, blah, blah. That's why he starts going to relive and he goes and looks up what was Abstergo looking for when they had Desmond? What kind of things in the Animus did they do with Desmond? And that's why he goes back to relive Altair and Ezio's memories because he wants to discover what Desmond learned. Mm. Oh, I just, so, I just, I, I thought of something cool. If, if you actually include that in the remakes, where w- when Desmond is referenced, uh, the anime starts talking about Desmond, Desmond, and who he is, and then it's like blocked by someone, and you don't get any more information. It's like you should not authenticated or not or something like that. But then it would kind of cut out certain story bits for people who've never played them. That's the only worry then. But it'd just be so cool though. I agree. I, I agree with you. But we know that. Whereas yeah, new players might not. So it would probably only make more sense if he's kind of secretly doing this. Yeah. Like the, his whole part of it. He he knows about Desmond. He's like, what did what did my dad or, yeah, what did my dad or, does he even know it's his dad or what did this guy find out? He's reliving this stuff. Yeah, you know, there could be some very interesting stuff with the modern day. You don't have to do much. It's just kind of like the, it's almost like the, the title menu where you pick what game you play is the modern day stuff. And he says yeah. a few lines, and there's a, a cutscene or two just to explain itself. And it kind of does a quick recap from Empire of how he knows about his dad, and he's like, I wonder what my dad found out. And it's not, yeah. it doesn't really add anything. It's just like he then learns about Ezio and Altair and Connor. That's yeah. about it. And then you yeah, get all the remastered cool. games. But like it's as well, they could add into that is just because you could just be in the same place you were in like Empire, like where you play as Desmond's son, like. Yeah, you'd be, in, you'd be in the same place. They could add a, a couple more cryptic things just for people that bought that game, because you know, if you're buying all the Assassin's Creed games, you're probably into that kind of stuff. So you could add a little bit more in there just to progress the story ever so slightly, not too much, because obviously it's not like a main main game. But you could have that, and then obviously he learns about Ezio, Altair, Connor, whatever they like would do with that, and through that kind of stuff with Desmond, and then that would obviously lead on to the Empire sequel kind of thing, which would take place next, which would be cool. But there How could awesome. be huge details in these small games or the remaster because Ubisoft love putting really important <laughs> details in their side stuff. <laughs> that's very true. So that's true. very true. Um, yeah. And I just think that's what an amazing, unique way to do a remaster. Perfect. Yeah. 
Uh, and because we've we've talked about this now, James, for quite a while, but uh, this is the most we've delved into it and what you could really do story wise. Yeah. 